What's going on guys and welcome back to Touchdowns to Home Runs. My name is Bernie. Thank you for joining us today and I hope that your day is going absolutely fantastic whenever and wherever you're watching this video from. Today we're going to be doing a 2020-2021 Michigan Wolverines basketball preview and I mean we have a lot to talk about because this was a very interesting offseason. Michigan ended the offseason and they come into this year with plenty of really solid recruits that we're going to be breaking down in just a minute. But if you think back to the beginning of the offseason, the lost commitment of Isaiah Todd, also the shock decision of Joshua Christopher, and there was a lot to stress about, especially without knowing if Isaiah Livers was going to return or not. But good news, Isaiah Livers is returning, and we're going to be breaking down what this looks like for the Michigan Wolverines. So today we're going to be looking at the starters, the bench, the schedule overview, and then I'll be giving my overall thoughts on the Michigan Wolverines for this year. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. So in terms of starters, they could go a few ways, especially in terms of the guards. I know that Sean D. Brown got his waiver, so he's cleared to play for Michigan this year. But I still think at point guard, Michigan goes with Mike Smith. This is a new name for Wolverines fans. He's a transfer from, Col from Columbia, averaged 22.8 points per game last year, four and a half assists. This is a guy who's extremely experienced, and he's experienced on and off the court. And I don't know if you guys have watched some interviews with Mike Smith, but he's very professional. He just does stuff the right way. And he's got a lot of experience, like I was saying, and especially until Zeb Jackson gets more experience, I think Mike Smith is the best option to go with in terms of the starting point guard. In terms of the shooting guard, we got a familiar face. I think it's going to be Eli Brooks. Now there is a possibility that Eli Brooks goes to the point guard position and Brown takes over at shooting guard, but I like Eli Brooks better at the shooting guard position. He did fill in last year at point guard at times for Xavier Simpson and wasn't bad, but I just, again, think he's more natural at shooting guard. He's a fantastic shooter, and if he can replicate the play that we sort of saw from him last year and improve his ball handling slightly, he's very versatile, and the Wolverines, no matter which way they go, will have a fantastic backcourt. I'm expecting big things this year from Eli Brooks. In terms of the forwards, we have Franz Wagner and Isaiah Livers. Now, in terms of the forwards, Michigan lacks a little bit of size. But in terms of Franz Wagner, this is a guy who could really, really have a breakout year this year. He had a slow start last season due to that injury he had on his wrist, but we saw what he's capable of as he found his groove towards the end of the season. And I think a lot of people have lower expectations for Franz Wagner than they should really have because this is a fantastic player who has length, he can handle the ball, fantastic three-point shooter, you know, when he's on, and also a fantastic defender. I always tell people who don't watch Michigan basketball about the defense part. I think it's such an underrated part of the game now, and a lot of players who are great defenders don't necessarily get credit for it. But Franz Wagner is a fantastic two-way player, and I think he's projected to get drafted into the NBA after this year, and I think that He's going to be a fantastic player in the NBA because of his ability to play two ways. Now moving on to Isaiah Livers. This is the backbone of the Wolverines team. And I cannot stress the importance of his decision to return back to the Wolverines this year. Huge. I, in my opinion, it takes the Wolverines from a team definitely outside the top 25, but at the back end of the Big Ten, to now a mid to upper tier Big Ten team who, in my belief, will end the season in the top 25 and started the season as the number 25 rank. I mean, Isaiah Livers is a guy who can do it all. And, and Wolverine basketball fans, we know all about Isaiah Livers. He can shoot from three, underrated defender, but he's fantastic defensively and can guard multiple positions. He, he has the ability to drive and also finish at the rim. And I think this is the Wolverines' best shot at having an all-Big Ten player this year. All around, Isaiah Livers can do everything, and, and we saw it last year on the difference on the Michigan performance when we have Isaiah Livers compared to when we don't. And finally, at the starting center, we're going to have Hunter Dickinson. Now, again, this is a new name for Wolverines fans. He's one of the new recruits that we got from last year, a freshman. He's a four-star. In the class of 2020, he was rated 42nd overall. Hunter Dickinson is exactly what Michigan needs to replace John Teske. He's an absolutely fantastic player, skilled around the basket, 
will work well with Juwan Howard's sort of pick and roll scheme that they want to run. And I think it's definitely good that we can keep Austin Davis on the bench now, keep that size at the center position, and I think it just works really well for them overall in terms of how their depth chart shapes up. In terms of the bench, this is where I really like the Wolverines this year. They're extremely depthy. Austin Davis, Brandon Johns, Sean D. Brown, Terrence Williams, Zeb Jackson. We got depth at every position and some really, really quality depth as well. And people who really, at the end of the day, could be starters for other teams. Austin Davis, breakout year last year after sort of that middle part of the year. He can rebound. He can finish at the rim. We saw him be a fantastic backup player to Teske. We saw him get a bunch of minutes. And he's going to be, again, that same solid backup role player to the inexperienced Hunter Dickinson. And he's going to be a really key player to have just in case Dickinson potentially gets into foul trouble, needs rest. Davis is fantastic to have on the bench. Next, we got Brandon Johns. We saw a ton of him last year with the Isaiah Livers injury. He could potentially work his way into being a starter, but it's probably better if he stays as a rotation guy for now. He just does a lot of things right. He's a fantastic shooter from the perimeter. He can work inside. And realistically, he's probably the most likely Big Ten sixth man of the year. He's a guy I would feel comfortable in the starting rotation. I just think we got to leave Wagner and Livers in at the three and the four. But again, Brandon Johns, fantastic player to have on the bench. Next is Sean D. Brown. This is a new name. He might potentially be a starter this year. A transfer from Wake Forest. He's a big bodied guard at 6'5, 215. He brings experience, big scoring threat. And I think he's just a guy who fits in regardless of where he's going to be put in in this Wolverines rotation, whether he's a starter, whether he's on the bench. He's just a guy who's going to give you points and quality minutes whenever he's on the court. Terrence Williams is another one of the top recruits brought in this year by Juwan Howard. He was a four-star recruit, ranked 93rd in the recruiting class in 2020. He's a guy who could see a hefty amount of minutes. He's the backup for both Livers and Wagner. So whenever those guys need rest, we're putting Terrence Williams in. He's going to give us some quality minutes. He's very explosive, gives the Wolverines some length on the court, and it could be the way the Wolverines give teams different looks. And finally, we have Zeb Jackson. Now, Zeb Jackson... Four-star recruit, 88th overall in the recruiting class of 2020. This is Michigan's future point guard. Because of the depth, though, at the guard positions right now, he's not going to start this year, but he'll come off the bench behind Brooks and Smith. And I'm really, really excited about Zeb Jackson and to see what he can do. Anyways, let's look over to Michigan's schedule. And it's interesting because Michigan had a packed opening to the season, with, but then some of the games got canceled due to COVID. They had that one game in England against Villanova. They were also in the Empire Classic Tournament where they were facing Villanova in the first round of that tournament, but they pulled out of that. So that's not happening anymore. But let's look at what is happening. The start of the schedule is the easiest for the Wolverines. They start off with Bowling Green on Wednesday, but I would honestly be disappointed if we don't start at least 5-0. And I think there's potential for more, you know, pushing 10-0 as well. And the early part of the season is really important to have that easy schedule because of the amount of new faces that the Wolverines have. It gives guys, especially Dickinson, who's going to be a starter, it gives sort of all of these new guys just a chance to understand the scheme that Juwan Howard runs. And by the time we go to play those bigger games, especially at the end of the season... I think that we will be more than ready. However, the Big Ten overall does not make it easy. The Big Ten this year is extremely stacked. When we look at teams like Illinois, Wisconsin, Iowa, MSU, all teams who are huge Big Ten contenders. And then we also look at teams like Indiana, Rutgers, Purdue, maybe OSU, all teams who are capable of the March Madness. And as of now, the Big Ten is predicted right in that realm of sending sort of 10-ish teams to the March Madness, but again, we don't know what the season's going to look like with COVID. I know that college basketball has already had some issues, so we're going to have to see in terms of that. But what I really want to focus on is Michigan's final third of the schedule, their final eight games. Let me read out the teams that they play. Michigan State, Illinois, Wisconsin, Rutgers, Ohio State, Indiana, Iowa, and Michigan State. I mean, I just read out basically 10 teams that could make the March Madness, and the final eight games that the Michigan Wolverines play, like they get the whole deal. All of the tough teams in the Big Ten they get, they get Michigan State twice, Iowa, Wisconsin, all teams who are March Madness contenders, top seeds. I mean, it's scary. And I hope that the Wolverines 
you know, are good enough to be in the range to compete, but you never know with Michigan sports. I still have high expectations, but the final third of the schedule is definitely something to look out for because regardless of how good we're playing at the time, I mean, that's a scary stretch of eight games. Overall, in terms of experts, I would say that Michigan's gotten sort of lowish expectations. It's not really due to a lack of their talent. It's more due to the level of the teams in the Big Ten, and even the bottom feeder teams in the Big Ten are still really talented. And as we saw last year, Big Ten is one of those conferences, really, that anybody can beat anybody on a given night. The early part of the schedule I was mentioning is extremely important, not only to, you know, get the guys involved in the scheme, but in order to have a good enough record come the end of the season, the early games, the ones that we have to win, are extremely important. But I genuinely think that if the Wolverines don't have a lot of injuries especially from their key guys, that the Wolverines are a threat. I know that we're deep, but I think that having a deep bench is what makes us such a good team. And obviously, you never want injuries, especially from your starters. But yeah, I have high expectations for the Wolverines. Never a good thing to say about a Michigan team, but I genuinely have good faith in this program. And I think that we're trending in the right direction, you know, looking ahead to what Juwan Howard is able to do recruiting and the recruiting class that we had not only this year, but also looking ahead to next year. Anyways, guys, if you did make it to this point in the video, thank you. Let me know your thoughts and predictions on the Michigan Wolverines down in the comment section below. If you liked today's video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to Touchdowns to Home Runs for more content just like this. If you haven't already, make sure to check out our store and our podcast. Links for those are down in the description. Make sure to check those out. You will not regret it. Again, if you made it to this point in the video, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.